In this video, I'll show you how I installed a Dobinson's 2-inch lift kit into our 2019 Holden Trailblazer. Uh, at the same time, we also installed a set of Falcon Wild Peaks, uh, one size bigger than the factory. Uh, so fa from factory, they're a 265 These are a 265 They're around one inch taller in total. Uh, we probably could have crept out to a 265 uh, so two inches bigger than the standard size. But then you start to run into trouble with the body mount and the tire fouling when you've got uh, some steering angle on the car. Uh, the two inch lift kit was quoted in the specs as providing 40 mils of lift. Uh, it's probably gonna be pretty accurate. After fitting the tires plus the lift kit, I've gained around 57 mils in the front and about 56 mils in the back. So 40 mils for the lift kit and around another 10 to 15 mil uh, for the additional tire wall, uh, side wall of the tire. So all in all, I'm uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. Let's get the car in the shed and I'll show you how it's done. So the first thing we need to do is take off the wheels and jack up the vehicle. Now that we've got the car nice and high up off the ground, I've put a jack stand underneath, we can let the weight back down off the jack. Seat him aside. We can take our wheel off. With the front wheel off, we can now see what we're dealing with to pull out the old shock and spring. Um, so what we'll need to do is there are three bolts on the top of the strut behind this little flap. It's just a protection strip to stop mud and stuff entering your engine bay. And um, we'll have a look at removing those that flap if we need to, if we can't access the bolts. So we've got the three bolts on top that we need to undo. Um, I'll also undo this wheel speed sensor. It's got two clips, one clip, two clip. It goes down the back behind the upper control arm. There's one bolt on here, and then it runs down onto the bottom of the stub axle. And then also, into the back of the wheel. So I'll remove that and get it right out of the way. It's just one less thing we have to worry about damaging if we move it first. Um, I'll also remove the bolt holding this brake line to the upper control arm, just so we can get that out of the way as well, not put any tension on it or pull on it. Uh, we'll then need to remove these four bolts here, holding the upper control arm to this ball joint. Then the whole bottom strut, uh, sorry, stub axle should just roll away. We'll be able to get to the bottom bolt on the strut. We'll remove this sway bar link as well. Um, and also drop off the steering arm so that we can pull the bottom half of this strut out through the gap here. All right, let's get into it. I'll start by removing these three 14 mil nuts on the top. I'm not gonna take this front one right off. I'll leave that there just to hold the weight of the strut and we'll remove it at the end. Uh, we don't need to remove that strip. We can simply reach in and get them. Next up, I'll remove the wheel speed sensor, just a 12 mil bolt. And then there are two T27 torque bit bolts that I showed you before, one on the top of the stub axle and one on the back of the rim. So I'll go ahead and remove those as well. Okay, I've just tucked that up out of the way. No need to remove those clips. It'll be finer where it is. Next up, I'll remove the 15 mil nut from the bottom of the sway bar link pin so we can get that out of the way. All right, if you look on this side. So I'm gonna remove that bottom end down here, that 15 mil nut there. Then we'll be able to swing that sway bar link up out of the way along here. We should be able to pull the strut body out and away. From this angle, you can probably also see where the two torque bits we're holding the wheel speed sensor to the stub axle. Okay, so with the sway bar link now moved out of the way, we can start on the steering arm.
With that undone, I'll now give the stub axle a couple of taps to free the steering arm from the knuckle. Okay, so that's now free. We can undo the nut and lower the steering arm out of the way. Okay, so I'll now remove this 12mm nut holding the brake line. That allows us to get the brake line over here out of the way and gets a bit of slack in it so there's no weight on the line once we lower this stub axle. Uh, now we've just got to remove these four 12 mils holding the upper control arm onto the ball joint. That last bit of weight from this whole stub axle is probably hanging on this bolt. So I take the weight and you should be able to pull the bolt out. From there, as you can see, with the weight of the stub axle sitting there, there's no tension on that brake hose. That's perfect. So now all we need to do is go and remove the bottom nut from the bottom of the factory strut, and then we can remove this last 40 mil nut on the top, and we should be able to pull that, that whole shock assembly out down through the bottom. Now we've got that removed, we should be able to tap that out with a punch and a hammer, and then undo that last nut on the top, and we can pull the whole strut out. With this bottom bolt now removed, I've also undone the top nut, so I should be able to now slip this original strut down and out from underneath the... Just move the steering arm and the sway bar lid. And there we have it. Now we've got that out. I've got it laid side by side with the brand new Dobinson's 2 inch lift kit. Uh, they look a very similar length sitting on the ground next to each other. Uh, but simply due to the spring rate of the new one, um, it will sit supposedly two inches higher. Um, you can have a look, the body of the shock, shock absorber itself is a lot thicker. Um, the shocks that I've gone for are the twin tube nitro gas uh, two inch lift um, with the stock spring on the front. We don't have any accessories, there's no bull bars or winches on the front, so we've gone with the stock spring rates. Um, if you do have accessories on the front, then you'll have to spec a higher spring rate just so that it doesn't sag once you put the springs in your car. Okay, so I fitted the new strut into the car. Uh, it was just a, obviously a reversal of the removal. You just push it up from the bottom into the top and I've put some nuts on the top. I'm um, not tightened all the way up. I've left them loose so that I've got room to align this bottom uh, bolt. So I'll get that bolt in now, slip the bolt through and then I'll go ahead and tighten up the nuts at the top. I've just used the jack to hold some weight on the bottom and that should help me get the hole aligned. Next up, I'll replace that sway bar link. Next, I'll replace the steering arm and do the bolt back up for that. Might have to lift the stub axle up like so. The next step is to get this uh, ball joint back underneath the upper control arm and lined up with the four holes. Um, you can see I'm a little low there, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the jack to lift up the lower control arm until these line up and then slip a bolt in. Put our 12 mil bolt back in for our brake line. And then last but not least, I'll go and get the weeds, 
the wheel speed sensor out from where we had it tucked up under the guard, route him back through, drop the 12mm bolt. And then the two torx bits to the stub axle that hold the, the wiring in its place. And once I've got those in, I'll go ahead and check every single nut and make sure they're all tight. So that's one side complete. I have gone back and checked over everything that we've removed and replaced to make sure it's tight. Um, I've jacked up under the lower control arm and taken the weight off the jack stand over there so that we know the suspension is now supporting the car. So the everything is under its own weight in the front corner here. So I've gone ahead and retightened the steering arm bolt the nut on the bottom of the sway bar link pin, the nut that holds the bottom of the strut in, we've done up the four bolts on the top of the upper control arm, we've put our 12mm bolt back in that held the wheel speed sensor, the 12mm nut that held the brake line, and then the two T30 torque bits, one there and one down there next to the wheel speed sensor. So that's it for this side, everything's complete and torqued back up. So spoiler alert, I decided not to film the other front side because it's exactly the same as the one we've just done. Um, so I've moved on to the rear now. Um, I've jacked up the car, taken the wheels off, got it up on some stands. Um, so I'm now gonna go ahead and I'll loosen off the bottom bolt on both shocks, left and right. Um, and then I'm also going to, just as a precaution, remove the small bracket that holds the brake lines in. So that once I let the jack down and the diff drops, it's not going to pull on the brake lines. The only other thing I think is going to be really difficult is the top of the shock bolts. Oh, sorry, the shock mount is right up the top with very limited access up above that bracket. And this is the driver's side. So this should be interesting. Let's see how we go. So we've hit an early hiccup. As you can see, I've got the nut off the bottom of the shock there, but there's not enough room here to pull the shock back off the mount. It fouls on that pan hard bar bolt. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is undo the top first and then try and swing the shock on a different angle to get past that bolt. To improve the access to the top nut on this shock, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the spare tire from the back and see if we can get a little bit more access to the top of the shock. So with the spare wheel removed, you can now actually see what we're dealing with. Um, the easiest way I've found to do it is you don't get much of a turn on the spanner. So I've locked the spanner up against the side of the chassis. And luckily when I turn the body of the shock like this, the spanner on top will hold the nut captive. So I'll keep doing that. It's going to be a long process. Um, I'll see you when I get it out. So after what seemed like in an eternity, I was able to lock the spanner up the top where you saw it before and turn the shock. And I finally got that nut out. So now I should be able to pull this shock down and out and then off here. Success. Okay, so I've repeated the process on this side. I had the spanner locked in up against the chassis above that mounting plate you can see there. Again, and just the same pro tedious process of locking the spanner in and turning the shock by hand until it came out. Now that I've got the shocks out, should be able to slowly low, lower down the jack, keeping an eye on those brake lines uh, to a point where we can then pull the springs out. Apologies that I've lost the camera footage for removing the passenger side spring, but it should go much the same as this driver side. Just lift up from the bottom and then allow the whole thing to come out. So there's the springs removed from the car, the old and obviously the new on the outside. Uh, you can see the brand new levels ones, it's a two inch lift kit. The springs are probably close to that two inches high, but they're also a stronger spring rate. So they shouldn't sag once they're installed. We'll use the existing rubber spring isolators, top and bottom with the new springs. Uh, the old shocks are out there. Um, I think we'll have to reuse those 14 mil nuts on top, unless there's some hidden away inside that packing above the new shocks. Um, each shock came with a bag of new washers for the bottom shock mount 
and also a series of shims. Um, I imagine these shocks are probably um, used across a couple of different vehicles with a couple of different size mounting bolts for the bottom of the shock here. Um, what I did was I went through and found which shim fitted over the bottom mounting point of the car. It was an, this one was the nice snug fit over the mounting point as well as dropping straight in. So they're the ones we'll use. I've picked them both out of both bags. Use them in there. All right, let's get these open and start reassembling the shocks and springs. Okay, so the extra length of this spring is making it really difficult to push the spring up into the hole. So what I might do is come back, and I don't know if you can see that, but undo this sway bar link here to allow this sway bar and drift to come down a little lower. To give myself some extra clearance, I've gone ahead and removed the sway bar link pin from this side. And also from this side, um, it's just the slip, simply put an Allen key in the end of the sway bar link to hold it still, and then a 15 mil spanner to undo the nut. Okay, that should give me the extra little bit of room when I let the weight of the diff down. Again, we need to keep an eye on the brake lines and any other lines on the on the diff as well. So with the weight of the diff now off the jack, I should be able to pull down a little bit further and be able to get those springs in a little bit more easily. Okay, let's try again. Spring insulator plate's already trying to come off that rubber on the top there. Make sure we keep him on. Spring up as close as we can. Okay, we're pretty close there. I just might need to get someone on the other side of the diff and pull down to give me a little bit more room. Okay, so as you'll see, if my big head's not in the way, um, even with dropping off that sway bar, it's really limited for space in here um, and to do this one out I've had to resort to using spring compressors to reduce the height of the spring. Um, I didn't film using the spring compressors but if you want to see how they work and exactly what they are um, check out one of my earlier videos where I put some suspension in my VZ Commodore. Um, I also used them in there and showed how to use them safely because they can be dangerous if you don't use them properly. So there we go I've got the top mounted and now I can compress the bottom by hand and slide it over home ah, there we go okay so that's now mounted in the top and bottom retainers the plastic rubber insulators are still on the spring now I can I'll try and position these spring compressors somewhere so I can actually remove them get a spanner onto them to get them out um, if I get stuck I can always jack the diff up to put some pressure on the spring and loosen these spring compressors off now for the driver's side Very tight working quarters here, can't really see what I'm doing, so apologies if I block the camera. There we go, we've slipped that in. It's now sitting located top and bottom. Just make sure that spring isolator is sitting properly. And it is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let the pressure off those spring compressors and then the spring should expand within the spot and hold the diff tight. So that's both springs now reinstalled, utilizing the existing upper and lower rubber spring insulators. Now I will go ahead and jack the diff up to reconnect these two sway bar links. And then all that will be left will be to put the shocks in. So as you can see, we've re-tightened our sway bar link pin. Now all we've got left to do on this side is just put this brake line back in the right location. So just shift him up until you can see the recess line go through. Then take your clip, push it underneath there, push it all the way home. And then just to make sure, tap him in. So the last part we've got left now is just to install these new shocks. Um, the old ones, as you can see, they seem to have an extra washer here. 
we'll cut this open and see what we've got. So it looks like we'll be reusing the original nut, but I'll also go ahead and take off one of these extra washers and install it between this top rubber and the mounting point in the car, just so that it's installed as per factory was before. Um, you can see there's quite a difference in the size of the shock body there. The yellow ones obviously being the new Dobinsons and heavy duty. All right, let's get these in the car. So as it turns out, you don't need to use the original bolt like I did, I stuffed up. I used the original bolt, which was an M10 by 1.25 thread. The shocks thread is an M10 by 1. It's a really fine thread. Um, originally, I didn't think the new shocks came with nuts. I just didn't look close enough and realized that they're actually located captive in the back of the plastic cap that was on the shock. Um, to get that out, you just have to screw it on slightly and then force the black cap off leaving you the nylock nut to use for the installation. So I'll go ahead and throw them in the car now. So remembering from when we removed the shock absorber, um, remembering we had to make sure that we fitted the bottom end first. So go over that insert that we installed earlier down here, that's chrome insert. And then we'll compress the shock and fit it into the top receiver. Okay, so that's home. Now I'll go ahead and install first the rubber, then the washer on top, and then finally the nylock nut that came with the kit, making sure that that starts nice and square and doesn't cross thread, because I already had to repair that thread. Okay, that's on there now. While I'm under here, I'll also fit this large washer down the bottom and then the nut. Okay, that's plenty tight enough. I'll see if I can get you a shot of the rubbers up in there. That's okay, so we can see both of those rubbers have seated nicely and started to belly out a little bit. You don't want to over tighten them, otherwise you just flog them out. That should be plenty tight enough for now. We go on to the other side. Okay, so the driver's side, I'll do much the same. I'll put the bottom of the shock on first. And then compress the shock. And slide it into its position. And allow that to then extend up into the spot. And then much like the other side, same order, rubber insulator on top first. Not sure if you're able to see up there, the exhaust is probably right in the way. Next up will be this washer. You can just see the top of the shock bolt coming through there. See the rubber and the washer. And then finally, the nylock nut on top. Okay, so I'll go ahead and grab a spanner and tighten that down. Then once they're on, I will tighten up the bottom bolt on the shock. I've already done the one on the other side. All right, that's everything under the car basically finished. I'll just jack the diff up now so that all the suspension's under its own weight. And off those two jack stands, I'll nip up the top and bottom bolts on the shocks. And that's it, I can throw the wheels back on. And that's it, that's the finished product. Uh, as I said at the start of the video, around 56, 57 mil lift total, including the tyres. Uh, we've gained a nice usable bit of extra clearance, which will make the car a little bit more capable uh, without going overboard and having to do things like upper control arms, diff drops, etc. Uh, it's just a nice usable increase for the car. Um, if you found some value in the video, I'd really appreciate if you like and subscribe. Uh, maybe check out some of my older videos and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.